Hello friends, hello Siroc. We are really excited. Can you guess why? Yes, it's our God will do it again series today. And God's promise to us is higher ground. The Bible says, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will cause us to ride on high places of the earth. And one sure way to do that is through praise. So, so, put on your dancing shoes and your praise suit and let's give God praise. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have to pray. Close your eyes, put your hands together and let us pray. Father, we are excited about your promise to us and because your promises never fail, thank you for higher grounds all the way in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's give God praise. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do He made the trees, He made the seas He made the elephants too My God is so big, so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do.
me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so. Let's go! Jesus.
awesome. Praising God is such a pleasure. Guess what? It's even sweeter when we worship Jesus. So come on, let's worship Jesus. Just open your heart and tell Jesus you love him and sing along. Lord, I lift your name all on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Save us. You came from heaven to birth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah, yeah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us, save us. You came from heaven to work to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
Father, we thank you again for higher ground in every area of our lives. And in our church, God's favorite house, we open our hearts to you and to your word. Give us understanding and take us to a higher ground. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, friends. Cherished possessions and chosen priests, influencers for Christ. It's a totally, totally exciting day today because today is our God will do it again service. Hallelujah. And guess what the, um, the theme for our God will do it again service is? Higher ground wow we are going higher 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 very great exceedingly great god plants our feet on higher ground hallelujah so you are welcome to our second god will do it again service in our year of lifting the theme for this God Will Do It Again service is higher ground. Can you say that with me? Let's echo it together. Higher ground. Let's say it one more time. Higher ground. Awesome. We will all experience higher ground in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, in our first God Will Do It Again service for the year, God's promise to us was what? Can you remember? Did you join us? Can you remember? Divine lifting. And now God is taking all of us to higher ground in Jesus' name. Amen. So why are we so excited about this higher ground? Before we go on to that, I hope you have with you today your pen, your um, pen, pencils, your notebook, your offering, and all your items that you need to have. But today you don't need to have your devotional because we'll be teaching on higher ground. So what does higher ground mean? Well, higher ground is a compound word which is uh, made up of two words, higher and ground. Higher is an adjective and it means something of great vertical length and um, or greater than normal or great importance. Now the ground, I mean, we're all standing on, on, on the solid ground. Ground is a solid surface of the earth. It also means an area used for a special purpose, you know, so you, when a place is on higher ground, it shows that it's a place for special purpose and an area of knowledge and a basis of action. Wow. Putting these two words together can mean a lot of things to all of us. However, what is most important is what is on God's heart for us when we say higher ground. And this is what we'll be talking about today. Hmm. So higher ground is ground which is more elevated in relation to the surrounding area. What did I say? A higher ground is a ground which is more elevated in relation to the surrounding area. Now on this higher ground, there's a picture that you will come up on screen right now. And I'm, I'm sure that that gives you a true picture of what the higher ground means. You can see that there are three people standing. In the first picture, they are all standing on a surface. But you can see that the, the little boy cannot see what is going on. So he's not happy, he's um, looking down. And you can even see that the person standing in the middle is looking down on him. Why? Because he's on a lower ground and the other person is on a higher ground. Now, if you look at the, the picture by the side, the boy has now been lifted to where? Higher ground. He now has the, um, they, they gave him more stools to stand on and he can see what is going on. He can see the match, the wall that is separating him from seeing what was going on and the, what the other people have been seeing. That wall, the obstacle is no longer there. And can you see the boy is joyful, the boy is excited, the, he's at the same level with um, other people. He, he, well, not necessarily, it, it doesn't even have to be the same level, but he can see what is going on in his environment and he's excited. In this picture, even though they are all standing on the same ground, the shortest person initially couldn't see well, but when placed on higher ground, he could see better. You could see the beautiful things that make him rejoice and joyful. You can see him raising up his hand. He can contribute. He can dream bigger because he can see better. 
is in the place of advantage. God has taken him to a higher ground. And that is exactly what God is promising us in this season. And you have to believe it and key it into it. And you will understand why I am super duper excited. Because God has said it. We believe it. We receive it. And we are going higher in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our memory verse for today is taken from Exodus 19, 5 to 6. And it says, So now, obey me and keep my agreements. Do this and you will be my own possession, chosen from all nations. Even though the whole earth is mine, you will be my kingdom of priests. You will be a nation that belongs to me alone. You must tell the Israelites these words. Wow. Wow. This is a lot of promises. We have to read that again. We have to take that memory verse again because it's packed. And I want you to read it and understand it. It says, so now obey me and keep my command. This is God talking to his children in the Bible. He said, do this and you will be my own possession. God is saying that when you obey and keep him, you will be his own possession, chosen from all nations. Even though the whole earth is mine, you will be my kingdom of priests. Wow. You will be a nation that belongs to me alone. Wow. You must tell the Israelites these words. This is totally, totally awesome. So what an amazing promise. What was happening here? What really was going on here? Now, God set up a meeting between him, Moses, and the children of Israel. And we can find this story in Exodus 19, 1 to 12. Um, you have to read that in your own time. Just make sure you read what um, the Bible says in Exodus 19, 1 to 12. Now, just like we are meeting with God today at our God We Do It Again service, meeting with God is a higher ground experience. What did I say? Meeting with God is a higher ground experience. However, before their meeting with God, he needed Moses to tell the people his heart for them and prepare them for this very special meeting that will ultimately take them to higher ground as we are going today in Jesus' name. Now, what was God's special message for his people? What was this special message that God has for his people? You have to listen carefully. It can be found in Exodus 19, 5 to 6. And it says, so now obey me and keep my agreement. Do this and you will be my own possession. As long as you obey and keep um, agreement, you will be a special possession chosen from all nations even though the whole earth is is god's you will be his kingdom of priests you will be a nation that belongs to god alone that's the message now that god has told his people is plans for them and you know the bible says that god's thoughts and plans for us they are plans of good and not of evil, to bring us to an expected end. The next thing they had to do was to do what? Prepare. Now, how do we prepare? Now, imagine the president of a very special nation has chosen to visit your house. You will definitely prepare for his visits, right? You will cook the best dishes. Your mommy will make sure that everything is clean. She will use the best of the best, bring out the best plate, set the table. You will do all it takes to ensure that he has an amazing time in your house. Now, guess what? The maker of the heaven and the earth is here with us today. Hallelujah. He has come to take us to higher ground just as he has promised. So we have to all prepare our hearts so that we can experience higher ground. And we will all experience higher grounds today in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us learn from and follow the example of the children of Israel and how they prepared to meet with God. 
Now, the first thing we see in is that their meeting was with God at a physical mountain. But in our case, God does not necessarily want us to go to physical mountains. He wants us to come to a spiritual mountain. He wants us to do what? Come to a spiritual mountain. A spiritual mountain. How is that even possible? As we go along, we will understand what it means to go to a spiritual mountain. Now, to experience higher ground, here are five lessons from Exodus 19. Come along with me and make sure you stay focused, you listen, and you get everything that you're supposed to get from today's message, okay? All right, great. So the first thing can be seen in Exodus 19, 4. And it says, every one of you has seen what I did to the people of Egypt. You saw how I carried you out of Egypt. I did it as an eagle carries her young on her wings. And I brought you here to me. The lesson one is look back and remember God's faithfulness. God was reminding the people of Israel about his faithfulness to them in time past. Faithfulness means to be unfailingly loyal, devoted, reliable to someone or to something. And putting that loyalty into consistent practice, regardless of the circumstances. Now, God is faithful. No matter what, God is faithful. Now, even as God visits us today, God wants us to prepare by looking back and remembering his faithfulness in our lives, in our families. God kept you healthy and safe through the pandemic. God takes you to school and brings you back consistently. What else can you remember? Think, think, think. What else can you remember? Looking back, thinking back helps us remember how faithful God has been. Now, Lamentation 3.23 says, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God is not only faithful in running and controlling the universe, but he is also faithful in our lives. Hallelujah. Do you know the hymn, great is thy faithfulness? Great is your faithfulness. Let's take a few minutes to sing it to God. Great is thy faithfulness, oh tells us that we enter into God's presence with a password thank you you do what you enter into God's presence with a password and what is the password thank you now the second point can be found in Exodus 19 5 and it says now if you will obey me and keep my commandment you will be my own special treasure from among all the people on earth for all the earth belongs to me and you will be my kingdom of priests. Hmm. Our second lesson is God wants us to look ahead and celebrate your future. God wants you to look ahead and celebrate your future. What is this future? 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him 
who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Hallelujah. God is saying that you are and will be a cherished possession and a chosen priest. Now you see why I said, hello, cherished possession. Hello, chosen priest at the beginning, because that is what the Lord has called you. Wow. I need you to personalize this. I want you to say to yourself, I am a cherished possession and I'm a chosen priest. Say to yourself, I'm a cherished possession and I'm a chosen priest. Hallelujah. Now, as God takes us to higher ground, we need to always look ahead and celebrate our future. The future God has prepared for us. See yourself as God sees you. How? A cherished possession and a chosen priest. Now, the third point can be found in Exodus 19.8 and it says, Then all the people answered together, We will do everything that the Lord has said. And Moses reported this to the Lord. Now, the third lesson, lesson three, is look around and commit with the community. We are more than just a collection of individual Christians. We are a community. We are a family. We are a church and the body of Christ. And we are what? We are better together. We are better together. We need to make up our minds to do all that God is saying to us. We need to be obedient. We need to plug into praise, plugging into worship, giving our offering and plugging into God's word. And we'll be blessed and we'll be taken to higher ground in Jesus name. Now, Exodus 19, 10 says, Then the Lord told Moses, Go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today and tomorrow and have them washed their clothes. Now, the lesson four is what? Look in and prepare yourself spiritually and physically. Look in and prepare yourself spiritually and then prepare yourself also physically. Now, where are you in your relationship with the Lord right now? You have to be honest with yourself. We are as close to God as we want to be. You are as close to God as you want to be. Meeting with God requires personal preparation. You have to prepare spiritually by setting aside time for God daily. You read your Bible, you pray, you praise God, you pray diligently. You have to do what? Pray diligently. Deuteronomy 4, 7 says, What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord, our God, is near us whenever we pray to him? Nothing draws our heart to God like prayer. Trust me. Nothing draws our heart closer to God like prayer because prayer is communication with God. And when you communicate with a friend, they get to know your heart. You get to know their heart. So it draws you closer. So when you get close to God in the place of prayer, it will draw your heart close to him. Nothing removes spiritual obstacles like prayer. Nothing sparks up our love for God like time alone with Jesus. Try it today. Improve on your time with God and you will be blessed. Also, you have to prepare yourself physically because God can't say to you, oh, you're going to higher ground and then you go to bed. Should you go to bed? <laughs> of course not. You shouldn't go to bed. So you have to set plans for yourself. God has told you you're going to higher ground. Is a prophecy. Is the word of God for you. You have to key into it. You have to receive it. As God is doing it, you have to walk in it. God cannot take you to higher ground and then you sleep at the, at the bottom of the mountain. Imagine that boy we saw in the picture earlier. If he has been taken to higher ground and then he's lying down on that too. He's, he's the one that is not preparing himself physically. So you also have to prepare yourself physically. Set plans for yourself. Write down your short and long-term goals. Write down your vision, your dreams. Remember, we gave you the goal setting um, template at the beginning of the year, and I hope you are using it and you are taking the things that you've done and all that. This will help you make out your level of progress and achievement or otherwise, and it can help to key you into what you need to do. Now we are on to our fifth lesson and this fifth lesson can be taken from Exodus 20, 18. 
When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the horn, and when they saw the lightning and the smoke blowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance, trembling with fear. Now the lesson five is, look up and get ready for an encounter with God. Wow, look up and get ready for an encounter with God. Look up and get ready for an encounter with God. You will have an encounter with God today in Jesus' name. Now, the most life-changing encounters with God require us to leave the routine, to leave the comfortable and the familiar. We read in Genesis 32, 26 that Jacob experienced a higher ground when he left his comfort zone. He experienced a higher ground when he left his comfort zone. The key to higher ground is God's presence. Selah. I need you to think about that. The key to higher ground is God's presence. And when God comes down, it seems like the only real appropriate response is what? Humble reference, humble reference and worship. So you need to remember that the key to higher ground is God's presence. And today you will have an encounter with God that will change your life for good and take you to higher grounds in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as God takes us to higher ground, there are certain things we must know and we'll learn these things from Exodus 17, 8 to 16. Again, please read, but we will focus on our key learning from it. The first lesson is the advantage is secured at the spiritual mountain. Exodus 17, 10 to 11. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hor climbed to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. Now, what you need to know is that armies usually would take the high points in a battlefield. But in this case, the spiritual took the hill. As long as Moses' hands were up, Joshua was winning. What I want you to know is what was happening in the physical was directly controlled by the spiritual. Did you hear what I said? What was happening in the physical was directly controlled by the spiritual. The spiritual controls the physical. When we pray and engage with God, it gives us victory over physical battles, over physical needs. Now, the second thing is, it takes physical exertion to um, sustain a spiritual advantage. What did I say? It takes physical exertion to sustain a spiritual advantage. Now, Exodus 17, 11 and 12. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired, he could no longer hold them up. Moses was getting tired, but Joshua was getting stronger. Now, the longer we stay on our spiritual mountain, the stronger our advantage become. So we have to stay there so that our physical life too can be up and burning and doing well. Now, the third point is the solution to physical tiredness during spiritual activity is support, not a break. Exodus 17, 12. Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Or found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So you can imagine, because Moses became tired, he did not take a break and say, oh, let me go and sleep. Why? Because the Israelites would lose the battle. He can't. He has to hold it up. So... When you are tired during spiritual activity, what you need is support, not to take a break. Why? That spiritual activity is what is controlling your physical life. So you can't afford to take, to take a break from it. What you need is support. So how did they help Moses? They had to get um, a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses holding up his hands so that they can continue to win the battle so that his hands are held steady until sunset wow after leaving egypt the israelites were attacked by a group of people called the amalekites 
They were led by a man named Amalek. Moses told Joshua to find some men who were ready to fight. Moses, along with his brother Aaron and Hur, went to the top of the hill. Moses brought with him the staff of God, the same staff God used to send the ten plagues and part the Red Sea. During the battle, Moses held up the staff. He wanted God to help them win the battle against the Amalekites. When Moses held the staff up high, the Israelites would begin to win the battle. Whenever his arms lowered, the Amalekites would start to win. As the battle wore on, Moses began to become more and more tired. Aaron and Hur brought a rock for Moses to sit on, and they helped hold his arms up high above his head. And so Amalek and the Amalekites were defeated by Joshua and the Israelites. Now God will bring you support, but you must stand your ground, okay? God will always bring you support, but you must make sure you do what you stand your ground. Now, what's, you might be wondering, okay, this higher ground, how does this really affect me? What areas of my life can I operate in higher ground? You know, how does this affect me? What areas can I experience or operate in higher ground? Some are intellectual. One, intellectual. There was no man as wise as Solomon. He wrote thousands of poetry in the books of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Now, though the disciples were also unlearned men, their wisdom was outstanding. God gave them higher ground intellectually. So you can achieve higher ground intellectually. God can help you to have higher grounds intellectually. Hallelujah. Now, in your destiny, you can experience higher ground in your destiny. Examples of people whose destinies changed as a result of higher grounds are Daniel, Joseph, and Jabez. Daniel was captured as a slave. <laughs> they even changed his name, but he proposed in his heart. He did what? The three names I mentioned, Daniel, Joseph, and Jabez, they proposed in their hearts that they will have this higher ground. And for Daniel, he did not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. He made sure that he kept himself. Now, by the time the king had a dream that he could not remember, it was Daniel that was sought, which resulted in his higher grounds. Now, once you make up your mind and stay focused, God can take you to your higher ground. And he will take you to your higher ground. The way he took um, Daniel... Joseph and Jabez to their higher grounds, we will take you to your higher grounds in Jesus' name. Amen. You can also experience higher grounds in your relationship and in your family. Be good to your friends and your family. What did I say? Be good to your friends and your family. Do not bully people. Do you know why? Do not be nasty to people. No matter what. Always be polite. Always be that child that is good and is polite and respectful. And why did I say that? That person you bully may be in position to help you in the future. Now imagine um, a great president. You won't know when you're in primary school or secondary school whether somebody will turn out to be a president or not. If you bully the person and if you help the person when they were wounded, of course, it's a person you are nice to. And I remember that, oh, when I had this need, when I was in trouble, it was this person that helped me, not the person that bullied the person. So please be good to friends and family that may be used to take you to your higher grounds. Hallelujah. Now, you can also experience um, um, higher ground spiritually. You are not so small. Look at what happened to Elisha. Elisha was walking with Elijah, but made up his mind to fly on higher ground spiritually. And the sons of the prophets, the people who were with him, they tried to discourage him. They did everything. They made fun of him, but he was focused. He purposed in his heart that he wanted to achieve higher ground spiritually. And when he came back, 
when he came back and he had already gotten the mantle from Elijah, they could see the same people making fun of him. They could see that the spirit of Elijah was in him and he achieved his higher ground. You can also achieve higher ground in your health. Peter's mother-in-law was ill. When he met with the Lord, everything changed. You can trust God for higher grounds in your health and in the health of your loved ones. Now, what are the qualities in the life of the people of God um, that were lifted to higher ground, such as Jesus? Jesus was lifted to higher ground. David was lifted. Joseph, David, Abraham, you know, all the people that experienced higher grounds. One, obedience. We've heard a lot about obedience. One of the instructions God even gave to the children of Israel is that obedience. Abraham obeyed God and was going to sacrifice his only son. And because of this, he was taken to higher grounds. Do you know how long it took Abraham to get that son? <laughs> and when God said, offer him to me, God was testing him and he obeyed God and he was taken to higher grounds. And God blessed him from generation to generation. And today, we're still experiencing the blessings of Abraham. Now, the second thing is humility. You see that Jesus humbled himself. When you humble yourself, God will lift you up. Jesus humbled himself because he died a criminal death and he was then taken to higher grounds and given a name above every name that the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the grace is the third thing. You can see in the life of these people that they have grace. You can tap into God's grace. All of us can tap into God's grace. Grace to be exceptional. The grace of God made David exceptional and brought him favor before the king of kings. So also was Noah and with Joseph. Now the fourth thing is that you must think big and dream big. Because a shallow thinker can't attain greater heights. Now imagine that boy, imagine that boy on that, um, the little boy that was lifted to higher ground. If he kept looking down and he's still saying, oh, I'm on lower ground, I don't believe this, I don't want this, he can't even experience the higher ground. So you have to think big, dream big, desire it, keep jumping, keep wanting it. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. You cannot be greater or bigger than your imagination. So it's important for you as you desire to attain higher grounds, to think big and to dream big. Imagine yourself doing great things. Picture yourself at your desired heights. Imagine it in your head. Walk towards it and gradually you will see it. In Jesus name. Amen. Now the next thing is faith. You need faith to remove every obstacle on your way to higher ground. David's faith in the Lord was complete and that's why he defeated Goliath and attained his higher ground. So you must have faith in God. Remember David, he said, I'm coming against you Goliath in the name of the Lord, in the name of my God. You know, he trusted his faith and belief was complete in God and he attained his higher grounds. And you will achieve your higher grounds today in Jesus name. Amen. And finally, finally, you have to be connected to Jesus. Jesus connection. You must be connected with Jesus. Stepping onto higher ground is a choice, a decision that you have to make. And it begins with accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as the Lord of your life. Are you out there today? You don't know Jesus and you are wondering what is going on here? What are they talking about? How do I achieve my higher ground? If you don't know Jesus, if you are not connected to Jesus, stepping into your higher grounds, you know, may be difficult because all those people we've been talking about, they are connected to God, they are connected to Jesus. So I'm inviting you today to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you're making that commitment today, just ask the Lord to come to your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Save me, help me, take me to my higher ground. I will love you, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed, amen. Now, our prayer for today, 
Let's pray. I want you to stand up wherever you are and begin to pray today because today is a special service. As I said to you, God will do it again. God will take you to your higher grounds. God is taking you to greater levels in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to join me as we pray today. Say, dear Lord, thank you for your word. You alone have the ability to take me to a higher ground. Lord, lift me up and plant my feet on higher ground as you have promised. I want you to begin to pray that the Lord will take you to your higher ground. He is the only one who has the ability to take you to higher grounds. He will lift you up. He will plant your feet on higher grounds in the mighty name of Jesus as he has promised in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord, let's begin to pray. Say, Father, in this year of lifting, Take me to a higher ground by your power. Take me to a higher ground by your grace. Take me to a higher ground by your mercy. I want you to pray. Open your mouth and pray. Communicate with God. Remember we said we have to pray diligently. Say, Father, in this year of lifting, take me to a higher ground by your power, by your grace, by your mercy. Make happen in my life. Things that will move me to a higher level in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, let's pray that God give me the grace to permanently stay at a higher ground in every area of my life, spiritually, intellectually, in my destiny, in my health, in my relationship, in my family, in every area, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child that is listening to this message today, that they would operate in higher grounds in their intellectual life, in their education, in their thinking, in their destiny, in their health, in their family and in their relationships, in the mighty name of Jesus, spiritually, they will operate in higher grounds in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In God's favorite house, we will say that this is our year of lifting and we are lifted all the way. Stay blessed and have a fantastic week. Stay safe. Bye.